Hello there reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. And a question came up on the forum to do with uh, Mimic and really it was to do with how can we automate uh, these slots and unfortunately the answer is you can't automate them and you can't even um, take remote control of them either so you can't even via a MIDI keyboard control them. So we can't do a MIDI loop back because we can't use combinators. There's no way we can actually switch between them. Um, I'm not a big mimic user because I'm not a big sampler sort of person but I understand you know when you the difference between going from one slot to the other is you can obviously have all these different things set all to different effect you know different ways and then obviously that's what you can do so I thought of two nice simple solutions um, in fact the second solution is the solution I'm really having fun with and the first solution is to answer that question or the real question of it's is there a way we can obviously do a, a equivalent of switching between the slots? I think that's the, word, the way I'll answer it. So I'm just going to quickly, from my other machine, grab a drum loop across and let's, let's grab another mimic down here. And again, I was going to grab, uh, oh, that would do. I'll grab that in. There we go. It's a different kind of sample altogether. And let's put these both on slice mode. And I might just bring that sensitivity down just a wee bit. That would do. And the same with this one because it's all over the place being a vocal. So let's grab that down, probably grab that down a bit more actually to be perfectly honest with you, something like that. Oh yeah, that would do, fine. Uh, now obviously what I'm going to do as well is I'm actually going to combine these up so they're actually in a combinator. But before I do that, I'm just going to move my mix channel up the top. And by the way, I have um, grouping turned off. So there's something called auto grouping, which is on, I think on a standard control shift G. I always sort of turn it on and off and that allows me to move my mixture channels and everything else around. But before I combine these two instruments up, or any anything I combine up, especially when it's connected to a, a mix channel, I'm gonna rename the mix channel. I'm just literally putting a dot on the end. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry it goes so small because um, I'm using reason to zoom in and obviously text is still small when you zoomed in. Uh, and the reason I've actually renamed them is because if I was to select both of these devices and obviously right click and select combine um, it would have named these two channels to combinator one and combinator one so at least i can still see them down as mimic and mimic so now theoretically if i was to play c1 on my keyboard they're both playing which is not what we wanted so the quick quick solution is there's a free to play device from lenote live called Receive Notes, which you can just shove on top of both of these. And I've actually, yeah, this has been in another one of my videos. I've used this device. And what it's gonna allow me to do is, is if I turn, say, that off, you're only hearing that one now, this one's not playing. And obviously, if this one's turned on, I'll turn that one off. We're now only hearing that one. And these can easily be set up under the actual combinator, you can come in and you can sort of go and receive notes and we can say, hey, I'm on button number, or, uh, where are we? Um, control, control, switch, oh, we called it a switch. So I could sort of add that to a switch. So when I click that switch, I can turn that one on. When I click this switch, I can turn this one off and turn the other one on and vice versa when I obviously click, or sorry, click that switch there at the top here it will turn another one off. And you can do it set up in such a way, it doesn't matter if these are on or off. So you don't have to toggle these on and off. You can just say, I'm gonna hit that one, then I'm gonna hit that one and it's switched. Then you can hit that one, even though it's sending it off, but you can do it as a switch. And the way you do that, it would be like here, receive notes, switch one. I'm gonna target the um, receive, is it on, oh, it's the word on. And you just literally, I'm gonna put these both to off, because this is receive notes number two. And on receive notes number one, you literally do the same thing. I'm gonna say switch one, target the on, and I want these both on. Excellent, and then obviously if we were to go to switch two, which I should have just stayed on the other one while I was doing it, but I got myself a bit confused. I'm gonna put these to both to on, and then on the first receive notes, again, on switch two, we put these both to off. I think because there's loads of ons and offs and offs and ons. There we go, so on, on, off, on, off. So when I select this switch, this is on. When I select this switch, it turns off. Even though this is off, it doesn't matter. So when I turn that one, even though it's turned off, it's turned that one on. And it is actually doing the bottom one as well. Uh, let's 
clamps that down with it. Should be able to get it all on the screen. So there you go. We're switching between the two. And there's nothing stopping you having even a third switch set up. So it turned them two off and turn the third one on. So on and so forth. So that's how you can quickly, quickly, quickly do that. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to stop there. I'm actually going to go on to what I want to do, which is uh, let's get rid of that and get rid of that. So I've got my, my two mimics. What I'm going to actually do is I want to have it so it's laid out on one keyboard. So even though this one stops here at, uh, what's that, G sharp, I'm going to start off on A1 and A1 is going to play this bit of the sample, so on and so forth. And if I had another mimic, I, wherever this one ends, I'll start it again. So I'm basically I'm going to be using the whole sort of keyboard range if I wanted to. So I'll just do it two to start with. And it is quite straightforward. And hey, that's quite lucky. Uh, this is a free device. And by the way, Receive Notes is free. This is another free device. This is from Panda, this one. And we this has something what's called Filter Notes. You can do what I'm doing up here and you can do it in the using key ranges and you can use Transpose with Inside a Combinator if you desire. I've always preferred to use players, A, because I can change the instrument underneath it. Because as soon as you change the instrument, you lose any of your settings, what you've got under here for an instrument. So having it as a player, it makes it quite handy that you can swap it around. Obviously, again, with a player, you can quickly turn them on and off, which I find is quite handy as well. So there's loads of reasons why maybe to do it at a player level rather than at the other level. So as you can see here, I've started at C1 and we're going up to G sharp one. So A1 is the next free key. So I'm gonna take this filter notes, I'm gonna put this up to A1. There we go, there's A1. And really what I should do is work out where this one ends um, which is, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, this happens to be nine, nine. So that would be uh, something like F2 or something like that. I'll come back to that, but you could set that to F2. It doesn't matter if you don't set this at the moment because there's nothing underneath it. It's a bit like this one doesn't have any anything on it because when I play C1, it's gonna play this. And if I played an A1, it's not gonna do anything. So that's absolutely fine. And A1 here is going to do something. But A1's not going to do something at the moment because A1's going to do nothing. I've already counted that there's nine keys, so I need to offset it by nine. So now, even with this simple setup, I should be able to hit this. So I'm just going to stretch across and play my keyboard. You can see I'm hitting C1. That's playing. I'm now going to hit A1. And now we've got that playing. C1, A1. Uh, that's uh, the D one, is that? And that would be B one. Yeah, so you can see we can now stretch these on and on and on and on and on. In fact, we could even turn that and say, hey, let's have a little play with that. Um, so yeah, so we can just really, really start building these up. But I'm just gonna have a last little bit of fun with this. And I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with something like a, here we go, let's uh, grab uh, beat map out, just drop that on top of there, hit run. Let's get some things going. But obviously the, the issue at the moment is, it's, it's only playing this top one, isn't it really? Um, it's not even touching this bottom one, but we can change that. <laughs> I'm gonna grab it as scales and cords of all things. And then playing around with the inversions and the number of notes and even playing around with your scales and you can get all kinds of things going on. Do you know what I think that vocal needs? Now you may notice that this scales or what's happening down here doesn't always light up. It's, a, it's just a visual thing and obviously it's giving the power over to the audio over visuals, which is absolutely fine. But I actually like this one called Denote and every now and then this comes up free of charge. And the reason I like this one is because it's got what I call lazy keys. It, it, it shows you really what's last playing as it fades out in the background. So rather than it being really quick, it gives you more of an idea of, hey, this is really what I'm playing. Um, 
There's also another one by uh, Tonic Me called um, Note Monitor. And the nice thing about this Note Monitor, see it's flashing really quickly again. You've got this stat. You can turn the stats on and you can see exactly what is it playing. Well, I happen to have that as a scale, but uh, let's change something else. We even got to go into that one. If I reset that, we can see what, what it's actually being touched. So beat map and scales and chords are coming through and these are all the different things they are playing. Which is really cool. Now, playing around with these things <laughs> can be a bit of fun. <laughs> Obviously, I killed it off there, didn't I? Didn't like that, did it? But as you can see, playing around with these. It, 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 you can have quite a bit of fun playing around with the scales as well. You can obviously have a bit of fun, and obviously, if you play around, play around with the key, it's going to uh, affect really what notes it's going to be picking up on. Probably not in that particular scale would be a good idea. Right, getting sidetracked, enjoying myself too much there. Sorry about that, but that's, hey, that's what it's all about. So what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm enjoying playing around, switching these around, switching this around, switching this around, and I want to um, do that randomly. I don't want to sit here and do this. I want something to randomly come and do this for me. So let's actually go and do that. Uh, what we're gonna to need to do is create ourselves a, another combinator. So utilities, combinator, Bosch. Put it down there. Let me just drag it across the other side of the screen so it's a bit easier to see what's going on. There we go. Um, I'm gonna grab my favorite uh, LFO, which is little LFO. There it is. I'm gonna hold the shift key down while I create it so it doesn't do any wiring in the background. And if you click on these and scroll all the way to the very top, you get a random uh, signal, but you need to come down one. And it may, may not look any different to you, but that one is what we refer to as smooth noise, and this is a nice square noise. The difference being, and I'd leave one on smooth, in fact, I'll leave that one on smooth and you'll be able to see it. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is just throw up the amplitude all the way, and let's turn these on, so these are now going, and let's put these tempoed, and let's bring these down. Um, I'll probably have them a lot slower, really, but I'm just gonna have them fastish so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, this one here, let's have that one there to 12 or something, and that one there, it's a bit faster. So they're all doing different things. What I'm actually gonna do now is this stack, which we was playing around with, this player stack here, I'm gonna grab that and shove that on top of Little LFO, because Little LFO, even though it's an LFO, it's actually an instrument, you can actually play it, because it's actually got audio rate um, LFO on it. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do, I've got to say, I'm going to wire CV1 up to the output of LFO1, my random LFO, I'm going to take random LFO2, put that into CV2, random LFO3 into CV3, boom, 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 do, 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 do. And it's all set to a bipolar signal, which is fine, because these top ports are bipolar. These are actually uh, unipolar, so if I was using them, I'd have to put these switches down but I'm not, I'm using bipolar, so we leave the bipolar switches up. Um, I was gonna do four things, it doesn't matter, I'll just do three very, very quickly. So we're gonna click on scales and chords, and then on the add, uh, you can't see it, but that's saying CV1 in, so I'm gonna select that, and then I'm gonna add that to, uh, should I just add, do it to the scales or the key? Scales or key, let's do it to the scales. Then I'm gonna go to CV2, and I'm gonna add that to the, notes so what is it uh, number of notes so let's add it to that uh, I don't want it to go to, to just one note 
So I can push that up and say, no, I always want you to go from two notes. So that one's never going to go to one note. It'll always just go from two. Or you can see this, look, it's already working. It's already starting to randomly go. Hey, it's what we like to see. And then I'm going to do CV number three. And CV number three, if you remember, I put that on that smooth um, option. So I'm going to put that into the inversion. So this one is on three. It's on the smooth. You'd notice then this would probably start going through the numbers where this one would jump from five, say three to five or one to five, or it would jump. This one's actually going to, you'll actually see it going through the numbers all the time. So if we want to go from one to four, you'd see it go via two and three. It's just the way it works. Now at the moment, if I just hit start, nothing's going to happen. We're not going to hear anything because we now need to, to link up this combinator with our other combinator. Now you can do it with another free device called the CV player tap but you have to wire up quite a lot of wires to do that. And I'm actually going to use my favorite, or my second favorite player, which is gonna be my MIDI CV converter. My favorite player is obviously Delta. So I'm gonna hold a control down, so I've got a copy of it. And the reason I'm making a copy here is because I'm lazy, because that way I can do the wiring really, really, really quickly. Gate to a gate, note to a note. I can grab this one now, and I can sit this on top of this combinator over here. off we're working and we've also got randomization going on which is really cool obviously I could come up with another randomization and do the key as well and do stuff there as well so give it even more movement but there we go here's a nice simple way of taking multiple mimics you can say you can have more than this as well you can just um, filter them offset them and then you can obviously play across your whole keyboard. You're gonna be limited to 128 slices because that's the number of maximum number a MIDI will accept if you've got a keyboard that big. My largest keyboard, I think it's 88 keys. So um, theoretically, I'm, I limit myself to 88 slices. There we go. Anyway, waffle, waffle. Thank you for watching and bye for now. <laughs>